I love arcade racers, with many titles that are near and dear to my heart, yet I haven't really talked in detail about my favorite. Not only is it my favorite arcade racer of all time, but it's my favorite video game ever made. So what is it? Well, that would be Burnout Revenge. This video will dive into why I love this game so much, and also talk about its rather botched Xbox 360 version. Burnout Revenge's gritty presentation is something that I adore. It has a rather muted color palette, dingy menu design, a grungy soundtrack, heavy sound effects, and aggressive looking cars. This leads to the game feeling much angstier than anything else in the series, and I think it perfectly fits with Burnout's game design. With a combat system that is very raw and aggressive, it makes sense that the rest of the game would reflect this. I've always preferred gritty atmospheres in games, and Revenge perfectly captures this for me. A racing game wouldn't work without some amazing cars, and Burnout Revenge certainly delivers on this. While the variety isn't the best due to many higher tier vehicles being previous ones with different visual customization, there are two aspects of their design philosophy that I like a lot. Firstly, it can be hard to tell what real world influences went into these vehicles. They feel more like original designs than the cars from other Burnout games, which gives Revenge a certain uniqueness factor. Secondly, like mentioned previously, these vehicles have an aggressive look. Especially with the higher tier cars, they are angular, sharp, and meaty. You know right away the experience you're going to get with the design of these vehicles. Burnout Revenge has some really cool tracks. Firstly, there's a great amount of environmental variety, with four locations in the US, two in Europe, and two in Asia. Secondly, these tracks are decently complex. They are generally not that forgiving, with tighter layouts, a lot of objects on course, and spots where you can fall off. There are also shortcuts and multiple paths, so you can take different routes throughout the event. Both the ramps and the track's verticality allow for proper airtime and vertical takedowns. I love that these tracks will screw you up if you aren't careful, which adds another risk factor to the experience. Being able to cleanly rip through these complex tracks is so damn satisfying. Also, a good amount of locations have a separate map just for the crash mode. This makes for much more interesting crash junctions compared to the ones that are set on the race courses. It's clear that Criterion really focused on making great tracks and crash junctions for revenge. The sense of speed in Burnout Revenge is insane. When boosting, cars accelerate extremely fast, the camera's FOV increases substantially, and a lot of non-obstructive motion blur kicks in. Much of the time you will be driving at top speed and drifting at high speeds as well. Also, the camera shake is just perfect enough where it doesn't hurt my eyes. With the game's tighter track layouts and dense traffic, whizzing through all of it at top speed is exhilarating. The vehicles in Revenge always feel at their absolute limit. My favorite soundtrack of the series has to be Burnout Revenge. You get a good mix of genres here that fit the gritty style the game has. It's almost impossible not to get pumped up when the soundtrack kicks in. Some of my favorites include Finch Inc. Andy Hunter, come on. And Asian dub Foundation Fly Over. Plus, Revenge and other arcade racers have been a big influence in the music I listen to. So, these songs always put a smile on my face even though I've heard them so many times. Revenge's soundtrack is one that truly never gets old. A controversial feature added in Burnout Revenge was traffic checking. This is where you can hit small, same way traffic and parked cars without crashing out. These vehicles can be used for boost, to hit other traffic cars, or even to take down racers. However, large vehicles, oncoming traffic, and cross traffic cannot be checked. While there are many who don't like this feature, I absolutely love it. 
The spectacle of traffic cars flying everywhere is incredible. It can be pure chaos when you and other racers are sending cars into every direction. It's not all spectacle though, as there's some depth to the mechanic. You can hit a car into a certain direction depending on the contact location. Hitting the car on the right rear will usually send it leftwards, and hitting it on the left rear will usually send it rightwards. This helps with taking down opponents not directly in front of you, and also in the traffic attack game mode. Sometimes you need to hit bigger vehicles in the oncoming lanes to keep your timer running. This means that you have to traffic check vehicles just right to get them to shoot across into opposing lanes. Also, traffic checking a car into another vehicle might save you from a crash. There are times where I didn't wreck out on cross traffic or large vehicles because my checked traffic saved me. Lastly, you do get a bit of a speed penalty when traffic checking, especially when hitting a car that was already checked. So sometimes it might be better to dodge traffic cars instead to keep your speed up. I think there's a ton of merit in both the spectacle and depth traffic checking brings to the game. I just wish people wouldn't be so quick to disregard this feature. This section will only focus on the 6th gen releases, as I will cover the physics differences in the Xbox 360 version later on. Now, Burnout has always had a different style of car combat in the genre, as it's not about dealing damage. Rather, it's about crashing out your opponents to force them to respawn. It's a unique take on physical combat that not many games have replicated, and the ones that have tried have fallen short. In Revenge, car combat feels heavier than both Burnout 3 and Paradise. You really need to put your weight and force into these hits, leading to very rewarding takedowns. The Crash Breaker in later events is also amazing, as you can blow away your enemies in spectacular fashion. Vehicle handling is also excellent. Cars are responsive enough to make nimble moves without feeling overly sensitive. As mentioned previously, the drifting is so fast that you just fly around corners. Also, it's really easy to start a drift, but being able to not hit anything takes some skill. It feels both effortless, yet complex enough that it isn't boring. This has to be one of my favorite drift models ever in a racing game. Lastly, who can forget about the fun crash physics? Crashes have great momentum, and there's much better vehicle deformation compared to previous entries. Burnout Revenge is a perfect showcase of fun and great arcade racing physics. While many regard the Xbox 360 release of Burnout Revenge as the definitive version, I have to disagree with this. The 360 release is honestly rather butchered for a few reasons. Firstly, the visuals. It's really ugly looking. The bloom is so excessive to a point where the game has this blurry, glowy look almost over everything. Also, the contrast is cranked up way too much, which leads to completely blown out bright areas and really dark spots. Some parts of the tracks are so dark now that it's hard to see where you're going. While there's some nice improvements to aspects like texture quality and the scratches in the car, the other stylistic changes just do not look good at all. Secondly, vehicle physics were made even heavier than they were on the 6th gen versions. This negatively affects the car combat and aftertouch. Car combat is rather poor now, as opponents have no give when hit from the side. Now the best way to take down racers when fighting them directly is by rear-ending them. For aftertouch, your car can't move as far as before. This means that getting aftertouch takedowns and moving around in crash mode are much harder than it needs to be. Additionally, the rank up videos were completely removed and the changes to how music works is really weird. Songs now play through the entire game continuously instead of cutting off at the loading screens. Plus, every time you perform a takedown, the song will stop playing until you're out of the takedown camera. I feel the flow of music is really screwed up with these changes. Burnout Revenge on the Xbox 360 is still a fun game and there are notable improvements, like the texture quality and sound design. Yet, I really can't recommend it over the 6th gen versions. There are too many changes that makes the 360 version an overall worse experience in my opinion. Burnout Revenge is my favorite racing game of all time, and I doubt anything will be able to top it. Its presentation, vehicles, tracks, sense of speed, soundtrack, 
traffic checking, and physics perfectly align with my tastes in this genre. For that, Burnout Revenge will always have a special place in my heart. This has been Gamer Alex. I hope you enjoyed the video, and have a great day.